Now, for more on the state of China's vaccine development and rollout, let's bring in Dr. Peter Chin Hong. He's a professor of medicine and an infectious disease specialist at the University of California, San Francisco. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on, Rochelle. So I want to start first with your reaction to the latest efficacy data that we've seen on Chinese vaccines. For example, Sinovac, not as, uh, as effective as people would have hoped. Yes, a little bit disappointing, Rochelle. But also, I think what's bothering uh, scientists and the community is a little lack of transparency. I think we'd like to have seen more of the internal ruminations before this expose by Brazil. So then talk about the main players in China's vaccine development and how their rollout is being received. Well, I think uh, what is amazing and really admirable about the Chinese vaccine companies and the Chinese government is, uh, first of all, the numbers, the vast numbers that they've produced. But more importantly and, and very uh, personally meaningful for me is that, you know, they are concerned about protecting the rest of the world, not just China. And I think that's not a sentiment that's felt by every developed country. So I think, um, you know, that is good. Um, the two main players right now in the Chinese vaccine scene are, of course, Sinovac. Uh, and we talked about that recently. Some uh, conflicting data and 50% and efficacy mainly in the Brazilian data in phase three. Um, and then, of course, Sinopharm, a little bit better for efficacy at around 80%, uh, depending on which country you look at. Uh, with about 86% efficacy in the United Arab Emirates when they've looked at Sinopharm. Both of these vaccines have a very different uh, technology than the Pfizer and the Moderna that we've heard of. Uh, these use traditional techniques, which are sort of weakening a virus, weakening the virus and exposing it to body, the body, and then the body makes antibodies against it. People are worried that by weakening the virus, you make it somewhat ineffective for really waking up the body to make that strong antibody response. Nevertheless, in both vaccines, they do prevent uh, serious and severe disease, not just all disease well. So then how does this latest data affect the trials as well as efforts to make the vaccine more widely available? Well, I think... Um, you know, a lot of the world has uh, embraced the Chinese vaccines uh, because of the, you know, the forward thinking from the Chinese government in terms of providing much of the world with uh, these vaccines and giving grants. Southeast Asia in particular, Hong Kong, Indonesia, of course, the Philippines, Malaysia, uh, Brazil, uh, and other parts in the Middle East. Um, I think people are surprised by the Brazilian data, and, and I think they need to reevaluate that. Um, the Sinopharm vaccines have a little bit uh, more consistent efficacy at around 80% versus the 50% in Sinovac. So I think that's probably a little bit more on more uh, steady footing. But nevertheless, I think for the global approach, it's going to be a numbers game. I mean, you can ham and haw all you want about the data. You know, if I'm going to get a vaccine tomorrow versus one year from now, Right. in a particular country, I might want to take that risk. So then, as you mentioned timelines, then how does the timeline for some of these Chinese vaccines compare to what we've seen from European and American alternatives? I think uh, the Chinese are ahead in terms of vaccinating population. But of course, you know, again, starting the rollout with, you know, tens of uh, thousands of folks already have received the Sinovac in China and a million uh, individuals in China have already received Sinopharm. So I think they're ahead in terms of the timeline. But again, the vast numbers of folks uh, need to would be a barrier. But I'm confident that the Chinese government has a really well-oiled distribution system as opposed to many countries, including the United States. So then as you compare the Chinese vaccines to, say, Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and their varying storage and dosage requirements, will the Chinese offerings be more widely available and managing when it comes to the developing world? Yes, uh, the Chinese vaccines have an advantage over the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines simply because it's easier to store. I mean, if you're in a tropical country, you don't have negative 70 degrees Celsius freezers easily at hand. And the fact that you can store these vaccines in a refrigerator makes it very palatable. But some of the other vaccines that are cheaper, like AstraZeneca and Oxford, also can be stored in a refrigerator as well. But again, for me personally, as a public health-minded individual, 
you know, one is just concerned with just getting the vaccine in the first place to many countries in the world. And just quickly, we only have about 15 seconds left. If there's one thing that you think could make or break the success of a mass rollout of Chinese vaccines globally, what would it be? I think it's just uh, political will, to tell you the truth. Uh, not all countries have signed in to COVAX. I think the United States is a notable um, you know, uh, country that hasn't signed in. People need to just put money in and fund these vaccines. These vaccines are not... Uh, cheap and particularly when you think about the rest of the world we need to really have a global plan before we can return back to the life we aspire to